We know how to analyze basic series and parallel resistor combinations. So, what I'd like to do is look at an example with both series and parallel parts and just analyze the tar out of it. Basically, get every current in all the resistors, each individual resistor, and in doing so, we're going to have to look at all the details. And it's a little bit non-trivial. You can't just do a quick, simple application of Ohm's law and come up with, for instance, the current in this resistor. We have to methodically go through this. And so I want to demonstrate for you how to, how to progress through this type of circuit. And to do so, we're going to need to find the total current that flows out of the battery. That's going to be a fundamental need because then we'll work backwards and figure out what various quantities are and in so doing we'll be able to progressively go back and get to the values of current in the innermost nested resistors in the circuit which is R2 and R3. So let's dive in and first of all we start with that innermost nested resistors and realize it's a parallel combination so R2 and R3 in parallel I'm going to call R23, the combination of 2 and 3. So 1 over R23, the effective resistance of these two, is 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4, and that's 3 over 8. So R23 is the inverse of that, which is 2.67 ohms. Good. We're well on our way. It's time to redraw it. I'm going to redraw it now with the value of that resistor, 2.67 ohms. Now, this is the equivalent of these two, and it's in series with this six. So the innermost resistors now are, you could say these two are this one, but this one is by itself, so we don't have to do anything with it right now. We need to combine these two resistors together, which is simple. They're in series, so they just add 8.67 ohms. Now, we have 8.67 in parallel with 10. Don't ever make the mistaken notion that the 6 is in parallel with the 10 or that the 10 is in parallel with 2.67. It's not. The 10 is in parallel with 8.67. You have to do these first and then put them in parallel. So R1234, the combination of R1, 2, 3, and 4 is 8.67 in parallel with 10 which can be easily computed to 4.64 ohms. Now I'm going to redraw it once more. We simplify all four of those resistors, R1234, as 4.64 in parallel with R5, which is 5 ohms. And so we just add those together. R12345 is 9.64 ohms, and now we can get the total circuit current. Real simple, the total current is the source voltage, I should be showing it to you here, divided by the re total resistance of the circuit, 9.64, gives us 1.24 amps. And now we're going to be able to work backwards through this and solve for the currents in each resistor. Uh, just to give you an overview of the approach we, we can take, we know from the original circuit now what the total current is. Now that 1.24 amps splits off here. So we don't know yet how that happens. The part that splits off here splits into these two. But we do know that all the current flows through the 5 because the 5 is a series resistor for the whole thing. So if we find the voltage across here, <clears throat> that's a voltage drop of this current. All the current flows through it. We can subtract that off of 12, and that's the voltage across this whole thing, R1234. Well, that means that's the voltage across this resistor, R4. So we can get the current through here immediately from that. The rest of the total current, 1.24, has to be flowing through this branch. So all of that remaining current has to flow through the 6, resulting in a easily determined voltage drop across there and then the rest of the voltage is across this little parallel combo so then I is equal to that V over this R and that same V over this R okay so I just described 
how to do the rest of the problem, but now let me go through it in sufficient detail. So we've isolated the circuit down to a single resistor and we've figured out the total current of 1.24 amps. Total resistance is 9.64 ohms. So we're going to kind of work backwards now and, and determine various quantities of current in the resistors and voltages along the way as well. So we'll progressively work our way back to where the circuit is full again. Okay, so as I just mentioned in the overview at the end of the previous slide, we can basically determine the voltage across all four of these resistors by recognizing that all the current flows through R5, subtracting that voltage drop from the 12, so the EMF minus V5 is the remaining voltage or the voltage drop across, well, one, two, V123, two, or I could say V1234, because resistor 4 is in parallel with 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 12 minus V5 is the I total times R5. 12 minus 1.24 times 5, 5.8 volts. So that quickly, we're able to figure out that the voltage across resistors 1, 2, 3, and also across R4 is 5.8 volts. And we could have done that another way. The nice thing about circuit analysis is there's always more than one way to do it, to analyze it. I would say there's always more than one, one way to skin a cat, but some of you might be offended by that, so I won't say that. So here we go. V123, how else can we get that? Well, it's also equal to V4, as I just mentioned. So it's V1234. One, two, resistors 1, 2, 3 are in parallel with 4, so they must have the same voltages. And collectively, that voltage is the total current that flows through the, this resistor. Basically, it's the voltage drop across this effective resistance, which is R1234. So the total current times the resistance of that resistor. 1.24 times 4.64, 5.8 volts. So see, that was two different ways to get to the same thing. All right. Now, making the circuit more like it originally was, the 1, 2, 3, 4, I've put back into 1, 2, 3, and the 4. So what do we want to do next? I'm going to get the current through number 1. Well, the current through this is V1 over R1. That current that goes through there. I mean, this is just Ohm's law, right? V1 over R1 is I1. You can say that. That's the same current that flows through this resistor, which is the same current that flows through the whole thing. So it's V of 1, 2, 3. It's the voltage across this whole thing divided by the resistance of this path. Now, we know the voltage across this. We just got it. That's the 5.8. And we know the resistance because... We've already solved for that. That's the that's 8.67. So there it is. 5.8 over 8.67. 0.67 amps. So that's the current through R1. That's the current through R23. So, well, we could just get the voltage across here now. Ah, that'll be helpful. Because this is really the original innermost nested resistors. So now we can easily get the voltage across them. So V23 is equal to the current through here times of the resistance of 2.67. So 0.67 is the, is the path current. Here's the path resistance. Gives us 1.79 volts. All right, so I2, the current through resistor 2 is V2 over R2. V2 is equal to V3, those two resistors. And that's the 1.79. So R2 is 8.224 amps. I3, V3 over R3. 1.79 over 4, 0.447 amps. Now we're almost done. I4, the current through this, you could say a couple things. You could just do V4 over R4. That's what I'm doing because that's just Ohm's law. V4 is V1234. In other words, the voltage across resistor 4 is the voltage from here to here, 
which is the voltage across R1, 2, 3, 4, the combination of all of them. Remember, these are in parallel. So that's 5.78 over 10, which is 0.578 amps. Now, how else could we have obtained I4? Well, we know the total current going in here is 1.24 amps. It splits between these two. We just solved for I2, the current through, well, we have the, we have the current through I2. But that's really not what we want. We want the current through I1. This current is 0.67 amps. That's what we got here. That subtracted off from 1.24 is what must be going through here. So 1.24, the total current going into this parallel combination, that 1.24, 0.67 goes this way, the rest goes this way. So that would give us the same result also, the 0.578. Find the I5. We don't have to do any calculation because we know all the current goes through I5 because it's a series resistor for the original circuit. So there it is. We've analyzed the currents and the voltages through and across every resistor in this series parallel combination. So go through that again if necessary. You should be able to understand how to do this level of complexity of, a, of circuit analysis. Reducing the resistors down to a single resistor, finding the total current, working backwards, and solving for the currents and voltages across every resistor in the circuit.